Hi everyone, just before we get into the video, whether you're an existing ham or a newbie, why not come down to our open day on the 30th of November, where you can have free tea, free coffee, and a free hamburger, but more importantly, you got access to every team member here at Martin Lynch and Son. So you can ask questions, you can look at the radios, you can have a go on the radios. So definitely come down, ask the team any questions that you got. There's no such thing as a stupid question, only the one that you didn't ask. So let's get into the video. My name's David and I work for Martin Lynch and Son, call sign Mike Zero Tango. Papa Tango. We've got something quite special for you this week. Is uh, we're just going to outline how you can get into the hobby. Uh, so for, for most of us that watch our videos, we're already in the hobby. Uh, but I bet there's some out there that are thinking about perhaps getting their license, are unsure where to go, what to do. Maybe they don't know um, other hams and uh, can't get that information. But what we're going to do today, we're just going to go through just some of the pointers on what you can do to eventually achieve your foundation license, which will allow you to enjoy the hobby um, as we all do. The great thing about the hobby um, is the fact that there's almost hobbies within the hobby. Whether you just like operating, whether it's building antennas, um, looking at propagation and understanding how propagation works, there's a myriad of different hobbies within this hobby. So it does carry something for everybody. What does the foundation license give you? It gives you access, basically. Um, it, it's not a complex exam. Um, it's quite easy and straightforward to learn. Uh, obviously, we all learn at different rates and different levels, but it is achievable. Uh, but it will give you access to many bands. You'll get talking to many other um, operators, not just in the UK, but throughout the world. And, and that, that's certainly something um, that amazed me when I first got my license. I did a lot of listening in the very beginning. Um, we'll come on to that in a, in a second. But the most important thing is don't worry. Don't worry about the exam. Um, don't worry about the outcome, because uh, pass or fail, you can always do it again. Um, but when you pass, that it is, it is quite exciting. The only real thing that you need, in theory, uh, to teach yourself is the foundation license manual. So I've got one here. Uh, this is the old syllabus. Um, we've got the new syllabus uh, manuals coming in. And from within here, there's a complete syllabus that explains everything that you should know um, and need to know for the exam. So basically by going through the book cover to cover, and it's not very thick. I mean, we're talking maybe if we look at the back page, hold up. There we go, we're on, we're on the back page. Um, if, you, if you look at what the learning is, you've got, I would say, probably about 40 pages. So there's only 40 pages to digest, and I've not included the, um, uh, the pictures that are <laughs> within here. But if you're not that confident with self-learning, for instance, there are many, many, many ways uh, that you can actually get help. Uh, one of the ways is being able to reach out to Essex Ham. They do a fantastic online course I used when I started my foundation and managed to pass. It's a series of videos um, and a, a series of PowerPoints. It's not death by PowerPoints. You don't have to worry about that, but it holds your hand through the entire process. And it'll even, even test you at the end. So you get an indication of, do I know enough? So Essex Ham's extremely, extremely good. The other thing is join a club, whether it be an online club or a bricks and mortar club, find out where your local club is. The beautiful thing about that, you're gonna have very, very experienced operators within the club that can hand down knowledge um, that isn't in the book. Because uh, some of the things that we do, it's simply not in the book and it's handed down from ham to ham. Um, personally, I belong to the Golf 8 AMC. We're an online club, started in 2022, and um, we've helped many, many foundation holders through their exams, the, the team at the Golf 8 AMC. Uh, what we tend to do, we, we don't run a course, but what we do do, the people that are going through and learning from the book, they can then come to us and we'll run a Zoom call and we'll go through um, the bits that they're not too sure about. So there's lots of help out there, um, including the OARC, uh, another online club. They do run uh, courses. So there's, there's no real reason to fret about getting help because certainly it, it is out there. 
So we've covered off the syllabus, where to go and um, find help if you need it. Um, and basically you just have to learn the basics that will give you access um, to be able to operate and key up on the, on the bands um, and make those contacts. One of the things that I did, which I found very, very, very useful, um, which again, another ham gave to me as a, uh, as, as a tip, and that was short wave listening. So no matter what you use, it could be a little short wave scanner um, or, or even a radio. If you've already got a radio and you're planning to do your exam, you've already gone out and got that ready. So as soon as you get your call sign, you can start operating. But listening to how the operators um, work on the bands and what they're saying, there'll be some things that um, I've never heard that term before, uh, but at least it gives you an opportunity uh, to, to look that up and find out what that does mean. There's lots of short codes that we use. Um, so definitely shortwave listening and understanding um, what people are saying, what they mean by what they're saying is certainly handy. I think I shortwave listened for about three months before I ended up doing my exam. And uh, it certainly helped when it come to actually operating for the first time. Uh, I was a little bit mic shy uh, when I first came to do it. And that certainly helped because I understood what, what kind of what people were saying. Uh, but it was a very exciting time. We all know that everybody learns at different rates. Um, so take your time. Take your time on learning. There's no rush. It's not going anywhere. Just take your time. And if you need help from a club, become a member of a club. Find an Elmer that you can trust to impart knowledge um, so you can ace that foundation exam. Bite-sized chunks um, and, and, you know, maybe um, uh, cue cards uh, seem to work uh, very, very well. I've covered off Essex Ham again, um, a real go-to place uh, for being able to get your um, training uh, online. But the exam itself uh, is easy to book. All you've got to do is go onto the RSGB website when you're ready and book that exam. There's a simple date picker and I think it's £39.50 for the exam. And once you're all paid up, it is a really seamless process. When I did my foundation, I was actually sat at a desk and we had moderators and there was a few other of my friends in the classroom. And um, we had to take the exam using pencil and, and a rubber most of the time. But uh, nowadays, it is online. You can still do it offline if you need to. Um, so uh, the online and offline, again, if you need help, um, you can get readers. So you can have someone read the questions for you if that's something that you struggle with. The RSGB will support you all the way through that and allocate readers. The moderator that will give you a, a, a quick email and explain that they'd like to arrange a call with you uh, via the um, system that you use. They use Teams or Zoom, some use Zoom. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about your equipment on the day. So they'll make sure your camera works, they'll make sure the environment is right for you and you, you can't really go wrong. So again, that just alleviates some of the um, stress or worry, uh, especially when you're going into an exam environment. But do remember that all of the questions are multiple choice. So there'll be a, a question and then you'll have four answers. So it's not like you've got to write essays or anything like that. It's simply multiple choice. And if you've done the learning or if you've sat a course or you've got help from a, uh, a radio club, uh, then you're going to be all set. You're going to be all set. 19 out of 26 questions. Now, after the exam, once you've taken it, it'll tell you whether you've passed or failed. So if you've passed, congratulations. You can just sit back and wait for the letter to come through from the RSGB. Uh, on that letter, you'll have a candidate number and then you can then go and create an account. You can, you can do it before you get the, uh, the candidate number, but you can go and create an account on the Ofcom website, put your candidate uh, number in, and then that will allow you to go through and choose a call sign. So you can go through multiple call signs, check in if they're available, and if they are, you'll be able to assign that call sign with you. However, if you did fail, all is not lost. Um, certainly, you know, go ahead and download the little report that you get at the end. It's really important. At the end, there'll be a little PDF report that you can download. And on there, it won't go through the specific questions, but it will tell you what areas 
where you could improve basically. So make sure you download that because that will give you some form of indication on what to brush up on for the next exam. But do book another exam. Um, it's really important because then you've put a post in the sand and you know, you're committed to it um, as long as you can make the time to do it. But I would recommend book another exam. So I'm gonna show you a couple of setups, uh, a couple of radios uh, that I think will work really, really well uh, on a budget. If you do have time to grab a radio, put an antenna up and to shortwave listen while you're studying for your exam, I would highly recommend it, as I mentioned earlier. It's great to listen in to figure out, you know, just how people, how are people communicating? What are they saying? What do these short codes mean? Um, but a fantastic radio that I had, and it was my very first radio, was in fact the 450D. which is a fantastic radio, 100 watts. Although as a foundation, you're only gonna be allowed to use 25 watts. It's something that you can grow into. Um, HF and six, so it will cover all of the HF bands that you want to operate on. It's very, very, very easy to use. It really is just plug and play. Um, great for shortwave listening, great for transmitting. Um, and obviously it's at a price point which uh, you know isn't isn't too shabby um, and we'll put the price for this one um, up on the screen now for you but dead easy to use and also really easy connect nice and simple on the back you've got the antenna you've got the power and away you go um, beautiful not made anymore unfortunately um, was that was the ham ham shack choice uh, but not made anymore but they're still available um, for second hand and what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go over uh, to something I set up earlier, where you can see um, everything that you could buy on a budget uh, from Martin Lynch to get you set up for that very first time. Okay, for those of you that haven't been in a ham radio store before, don't let all of this equipment worry you. That's why we're here. We will steer you in the right direction to get the solution that you need for your QTH and um, this is just one of them that I've put together. It's a series of um, radio power supplies and other essentials that I feel you're gonna need, uh, but I've kept it to a minimum. So we've got the 710, which is the latest radio from Yesu. It's a 710 field. It's a 100 watt radio, although you'll only be able to use 25 watts, again, you will grow into it. It's got a tuner, it's got everything that you need for a starting out. I use one of these portable, um, so it, it's just one of those radios that doesn't stop giving. The other thing that you need, nice little power supply, uh, 68 pounds for this one, 30 amp, plenty of headroom, and it will drive the 710 field absolutely wonderfully. So that's your radio that I would recommend, that's your power supply. The other things that you're going to need, and you might not know it, is a dummy load. Um, dummy loads are really essential for troubleshooting. Will there be trouble? Will there be things that you need to figure out? Absolutely, because that's all part of this science self-education hobby uh, that we're in. So a dummy load is really important um, and your Elm or your club, or if you're in the, sh in the shop, we can explain why these are quite important in the shack. Now, you're gonna to need to connect this lovely radio to an antenna. We're gonna cover off the antennas a little bit, but you're gonna to need to connect this to that, the antenna. So we do sell Messi and Poloni, um, which is a beautiful coax. Uh, this, however, is RG8X, and it's good enough for you to get started that's not gonna cost you too many pennies. This is about a pound a meter. Um, so depending on your garden or where you're going to put your antenna, uh, we can cut that to length for you. So that's RGAX, and that's about a pound a metre. So we've got the power supply, we've got the radio, we've got the coax going into the garden or wherever we're going to put our chosen antenna. One of my, I'm going to show you two of my favourite antennas, okay? Um, this one. It's called an N-Fed Halfwave, and it's a little kit that we put together where we've got a 49 to one unum, and all you need with that 
is some antenna wire. This is the Messi and Poloni, 50 meters. We even throw in all of the metal work that you're gonna need. So these are the tensioners and the dog bone that go on the end to isolate uh, the end of the wire. This is rated at a kilowatt, so again, you will definitely grow into it. But what this allows you to do, you can do an end-fed half wave for 20 meters. You can do an end-fed half wave for 40 meters with some wire left over, either for some other projects, or you can also um, attach a counterpoise to the unun. So brilliant kit, one you can use at home as soon as you get there from the store. But not only that, it's a multi-band. So it's going to give you lots and lots of different bands as a, as a newbie, as a, uh, a new, newly passed foundation holder to go and um, actually take part in some of the bands. So it's a great, great solution. So this is one of my favorite antennas. I'm gonna show you another one now. Um, so we're gonna wander over to our uh, DX Commander wall. DX Commander um, was probably, sorry Callum, one of the second antennas that I ever purchased. And the reason that I like this antenna so much is two reasons, maybe three. But the first reason is it taught me a lot. So when you get the instructions from Callum, which you can download from the website, whether you purchase one or not, you can download it and have a look. It taught me about resonance and what that means and how that interacts with lengths and different lengths and being shorter and being longer. So that taught me a lot. And the other thing is, it's an antenna that you do not need a tuner for. So you do not need a tuner like the long wire, but sometimes you do on some of the bands, but with the DX Commander, you don't. Um, so they're all put together in the UK and you get it as a kit. So you have to put it together. So you have to do a thing to actually make it work. My favorite is the Signature 9. I've had the Classic and I've had the Rapide kit, but the Signature 9 I really like um, because it can be self-supporting. So what happens is uh, there's a pole that you can put into the floor um, and then this will slide over the top it, a little bit of postcrete, and then that'll be lovely secure on the, on the floor. And this is just under nine meters. Um, you do have to put a few radials down, but not many. Um, it's, all, it's all trial and error, and that's what the hobby is all about. But this um, will get you five bands, no tuner. It's a vertical, fantastic for DX, and it is probably my number one favorite antenna. Um, so hopefully, if you come down here on the uh, 30th of November with our open day, and uh, you can speak to any of the guys, they'll be able to answer any of your question, including Callum, Callum's coming down. Callum's coming down to say hello. So if you've got any questions about any of his products, um, you'll be able to get it from the horse's mouth. So I look forward to seeing Callum, and I look forward to seeing you on the 30th, the Martin Lynch open day. And um, I'm looking forward to having one of those burgers. So take care for now, and I'll see you soon.